Hi, Tom Fontana and I are here today at the Adding the Fire Company and what we're trying to accomplish today is we're trying to give uh, a comparison, get a comparison of, of what the Bosch 360 panoramic camera um, can do for you in comparison to the Bosch 180 degree uh, panoramic camera. Um, a lot of customers have the question, when should I use a 180 or what are the limitations of a 180 versus the 360? What are the pluses minuses of the of the 180 versus the 360? So we just wanted to kind of bat around um, with the cameras and um, Bosch security client uh, some of the differences and, and show you with the video what, what some of these can do. Three of the biggest applications that I've come across uh, is school campus environments where they're utilizing these cameras um, in cafeterias, gymnasiums, um, believe it or not, one of the big areas too, uh, stair towers, where they needed two, three cameras in a geographic area. Now they can get by with one camera. Uh, so again, reducing camera count, reducing license count. In the prison environment, it's the same way. They're really trying to reduce camera count and try to put one camera in instead of two or three. One of the other applications that was brought to my attention, money rooms. Money rooms at one of the facilities, they actually had eight cameras in the facility. They had seven fixed, one pan, tilt and zoom, and still had blind spots. Some of the applications I've run into where these cameras uh, really kind of come into play, we talked about it a little earlier with the parking garage where we were really kind of trying to reduce the number of cameras in a garage, but we realized that the cameras that we were putting in the garage previously were pan tilt cameras and they were only getting what the camera was pointed to. We were able to significantly reduce the number of cameras in the garage while getting much, much, much better coverage of the garage. Uh, another application was um, a school customer, uh, K through 12 customer. Um, they were looking at um, corridors and crosses in, in in the um, in the hallways, uh, we could put a camera, whether it was a 180 on the wall or a 360 on the ceiling, and we could get much better fields of view of who was coming and going in the flow of traffic and hallways, following um, a subject through the hallways much better. We could look, um, we could look down four hallways in opposite directions at one time. Um, those are some some traditional things that are you know pretty much used in any sort of an administrative office or any sort of a an office or school or other environment where hallways and corridors and stuff like that were concerned. Um, some of the c considerations for the 180s, as you mentioned, in stairwells, you can put it on a landing between two stairs, uh, one going up, one going down, and you're getting that full up and down field of view. So if you're trying to track somebody through a stairwell, they don't disappear in the stairwell. Yep. Um, and again, like you said, you get half the number of cameras that you're doing yep. with, the, with the scene. It used to be that no matter where, if you put video in one area, you corralled them to another area where there wasn't. So we're trying to cover as much geographic territory today as we possibly can. And it's amazing that, um, you know, when we were kids, I know you had a brother and I had a little sister, and, you know, it was always amazing when you're riding in the car with your mother. Your mother <laughs> pretended that like she had eyes in there. She always managed to have eyes in the back of her head. No matter what you were doing, if you were, if I was picking on my little sister, she would just know that I was doing it, even though there was no sound, and she'd reach around and grab me or, or you know, or get me. And I'm sure you had the same situation with, uh, with your big brother. But, um, so you're saying our moms had 360 degree cameras? Just like, yeah, in the, in the backs of their heads, I think. And that's kind of this thing, you know, you always have eyes everywhere and there's really no escape uh, where somebody who's really looking to do harm in a, in a facility or looking to do can go watch what the cameras are looking at or yep. get an idea of what the cameras are looking at and then they can always figure out a way to get around, around the cameras. Yep. You really can't get around these because like you said, yep. you're seeing everything all mm -hmm. the time, which is pretty awesome in terms of continuous seeing surveillance and capturing flow of objects and identifying where something came from and where it moved to and what, what, what transpired in the middle. Steve, today, right now, I have the uh, 360 degree, 12 megapixel panoramic. So uh, uh, Jim is doing a great job down below there holding the pole. Hey, there we are. And there's Sean at the other side. So we're able to bring multiple streams from this camera and you can see Wherever we're viewing, we're able to see all the way up. These doors are about 14 feet high at the fire station. A lot of activity here. Uh, even the wide dynamic range shooting out the doors. 
So we're able to get a lot of information, but again, every camera has its uh, application. Tom, what are the limit, what are the resolutions of this uh, 360 camera? Uh, this is a, a 12 megapixel 360 degree camera. So, uh, you know, it's a single imager, so it is spreading those uh, pixels across the, all the, uh, the, the field of view. I know um, you, get, you get great overall scene capabilities with this camera. So we, we don't have uh, very many blind spots in terms of, um, of the camera. The camera is seeing everything that um, the angles will permit it to see. Um, there we are. Um, so this is a, a great application for if I wanted to know what was going on in general movement or maybe which apparatus is in the station, which apparatus is out on a call, whatever, this will be a great camera to give me that, that information. Correct. One of the limitations that you see as we're looking across the field of view in the, the firehouse, if I'm on the other side of one of these rigs, I'm blind. I'm you know completely obscured. So in the the firehouse again, depending on what you're looking for, I know you the way you laid out or laid out your system. Originally, you have cameras at each bay shooting back across. So again, limiting your blind spots. So again, application driven, but again, an overview camera. This is a great application for it. If you zoom in on something across the um across the bay over there, you, you, you notice that the resolution, it, it really gets a little coarse because you're, you're kind of exceeding the limits of that 12 megapixel uh, because you're sharing it across that whole 360 field of view. Correct, correct. So again, if you're trying to get identification from a long distance, uh, it's, it's going to stretch the image at that point. But, you know, again, you're looking for general surveillance. It's a great camera with low light level and also uh, high dynamic range. Okay, so now on the screen is the 180. We had the 360 up on the screen prior to this, and now we have the 180. The, the 180 is configured about the exact same height, maybe just a couple of feet lower than the 360. Um, but what you'll see with this is, again, same resolution, 12 megapixel as the 360, but this camera has that 12 megapixel basically forward facing, and it's all in what is a much smaller field of view. So the pixel density, the pixel count for this is much, much higher. Um, so this camera gives us slightly better resolution um, in the field of view as it's looking out away from the, the wall where it's located. It, Steve, in an application for uh, the 180 degree, um, again, like the 360 can see pretty much everything from the, almost the horizon below. The 180 now set to a wall and can see all the way up to the sky and pretty much down. So you can see here, we're seeing almost all the way up into the ceiling above it and almost all the way down beneath it. And one of the things that we are doing uh, with our arrangement of, of mounts and housings and things, we're starting to get these applied a lot more. So we're, we're kind of learning a lot about how, how they work and what some of the, the uh, pitfalls are. We're actually getting the capability of adding wedges to these cameras so that we can tilt them over because again most customers don't care about the sky they more care about what's in the what's in the field of view so as you see here there's a lot of wasted field of view on the ceiling um, that we could if we tilted it forward take much better advantage of by getting what's below the camera as well as you know what's off in the distance um, of, of the field of view yeah, with the 180 degree, unlike the 360, because as Steve said, we're looking at more of a directional 180 degree out, we're getting almost twice as much resolution or twice as many pixels in a geographic area. So again, a little bit, even though it's the same 12 megapixel imager, you're getting a little bit better resolution because of more pixels per foot. One of the things we're finding out is um, in applications where the, the ceiling isn't high enough, let's say a parking garage where you're trying to eliminate or minimize the number of cameras, but you're trying to get the most in a field of view. Um, what, we're trying to, what we're trying to overcome is that the 360 camera, if it's not mounted high enough, doesn't have an angle of enough to be able to cover outward far enough uh, to get long distances away from the, the camera. So what we found is in lieu of using a 360, if you get the 180, you can still minimize the number of cameras in that field of view, um, but you can get 
um, that that width field of view that you want as well as that um, top to bottom field of view up a ramp or or along down a um, down a path between the cars and Steve what it really comes down to again 360 or 180 degree site survey get giving us a call bringing the camera out so you can see exactly the performance and how it's going to handle and every application one thing to note there um, is that the camera has great wide dynamic range you're looking all the way across the parking lot and getting three cars that are outside the building as well as the the footage from inside the building the 180 and the 360 camera on the screen so left is the 180 and right is the 360 again the 180 is mounted on the wall uh, at a high um, high angle and the 360 is mounted uh, close to the ceiling probably three to four feet higher than overall the 180 camera so you're looking at the same sort of fields of view from both cameras you can see that the straightaway image of the 180 with the higher pixel density the the placement of the 360 is actually physically closer by probably about 25 feet to the two guys standing next to the fire apparatus um, so that image the the objects is actually a little bit closer but if you if you compare the images in terms of what you can see uh, in terms of the quality of the image and so on and so forth um, I think overall the 180 provides much better detail much clearer resolution because of the pixel density than the than the, the 360 does but the 360 offers that general overall scene field of view and that top-down sort of um, scene comparison of the of the scene and, and also you'll see Steve as you were looking outside through these overhead dock doors the high dynamic range on these cameras are just tremendous so we're still able to see in uh, you know uh, detail you know what type of vehicles out there be able to see inside and outside at the same time one of the things that customers always ask is you know um, we're looking at these two streams on the bottom which are actually cutaway pieces of the mainstream coming off the camera what's getting recorded What's being recorded on these cameras, um, what I'm going to do is pull up, there's the original, or what we saw, the, the warped image on both of these cameras. So what's being recorded is everything. Now, when I say everything, 180 degrees here, 360 degrees here. So that's what's being recorded. So the great thing is we're showing you the playback on these cameras, but on, I'm sorry, live, but on playback, you're able to digitally zoom in and pan around just like we are live on playback and get all these uh, justifications, which the main reason a campus environment uh, that has now 40 to 50 of these cameras and the prison environment also has about the same. They love these cameras because there's just no place for you know, people to hide. They can put one camera in a geographic area and get a lot more detail, a lot more information. So in the IP world too, that's critical because if less cameras, that means less licenses. Less licenses, less money. So they're able to reduce their cost by camera counts, but also license costs. Now one difference um, in terms of, the, of this camera versus a, a combination of a bunch of regular fixed cameras, I know one of our school customers has talked about applying these in cafeterias and what he was saying in cafeterias, he could take three of these cameras and cover the entire cafeteria, even all the little nooks and crannies with those cameras versus it was gonna take him 12 to 15 cameras to cover the cafeteria with uh, dedicated fixed field of view cameras, which I know, as you said, cuts down on the number of, of licenses, which is short-term and long-term cost of the system. But um, also, you know, with those other cameras, he was only getting what was in the field of view of the camera and to play an incident back like a, some sort of a, you know, a fight or anything that were related to an incident. He was trying to have to look at five and six cameras and see which one would give him the best field of view of the situation what was going on and with the three cameras he was able to much more easily call up one or two of these cameras and get full continuous view of of what transpired from the beginning to the end and then he could look at the others and see if he could get a better angle but one of the things that you and I've talked about is um, when you place these cameras they're great for overall field of view but what aren't they good for um Again, when you have large objects in front of it, but also when you're trying to see a far, far area, 
again, you're not going to get as much detail because those pixels will be spread out across either the 180 degree or 360 degree view of the camera. Right. Give us a call. Let us come out and show you the technology and let us show you at your facility so you get to see it exactly in the environment. Exactly. I think if you were able to try that and get your application covered, what you'll find is that you'll find uses for these cameras and you'll be able to improve your surveillance by deploying these cameras in your actual application.